This episode of It Was a Thing on TV is about to discuss something that should never, ever, ever be tried by anyone, anywhere. Marriage of conveniences so that somebody should remain in the country illegally. Don't get us wrong. We believe that there is a place in America for everybody who shows up here. But uh, there are these things called laws, and we are not about to get in trouble for anybody. Oh, I thought you were going to say, just after the first word, we're going to talk about saying you should never do marriage. Signed, three single guys doing a podcast on a Friday night. Okay, now you get to hear the theme music. This is It Was a Thing on TV. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the dregs of humanity. Episode 266, submission number 1500. I married Dora. I Married Dora aired on ABC from September 22nd, 1987 to January 8th, 1988 for a total of 13 episodes. Well, we hope you liked Marvel Month. Again, special shout out to uh, Johnny C for his role as the Watcher. Or as, or as he liked to call it, the Protector of the Deep. Tish. Tish. <laughs> and by the way, all the stuff in like the Goonies 2 and him doing the Electro song from Tasm 2. I did not write that. I just said to Johnny, just improvise whatever. And when you hear what the Tasm 2 part is rendition of that, of the song where Electro, like, turns heel in Tasm 2. Oh, boy. That is cold. Here's the 80s. Friday nights on ABC. Family sitcoms are fully entrenched as the norm. I believe you have the beginning, if not the end of the beginning, of the TGIF block, which would go on to feature such memorable shows as Little House, Perfect Strangers, Family Matters, Dinosaurs, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Boy Meets World. And of course, I was just about to say, of course, Greg's favorite, Boy Meets World. Step by step. Step oh, by yeah. step, step by yeah. Step. Can't forget about step by step. But, of course, we should note, this is 1987. Mm-hmm. This premiered after Full House. Because, yep. remember, this is Full House in its first season in 87. Yep, this would be uh, Full House's first season. In fact, let's do a premature look at the schedule here. Yep. It would be Full House, the first season, followed by I Marry Dora. And then we start out with Max Headroom. And then that's replaced by Mr. Belvedere and something called The Pursuit of Happiness. Not the Will Smith movie, The Pursuit of Happiness. No, something with uh, a history professor getting a job at a college in Philadelphia. 
They did Max Headroom on Friday nights? Yeah. They did Max Headroom on Friday nights. Yeah. That's bold. That is indeed bold. But then again, you look what Max Headroom was up against, and you kind of think, yeah, that did not stand a chance. Not one hope in hell. It was up against Dallas on CBS and Miami Vice on NBC. Oh, you could have stopped at Dallas. <laughs> Dallas and Miami Vice. Yikes. So suffice it to say, Max Headroom, that's another episode for another day. But now let's talk about the other show that aired Friday nights in 1987. This one. We have Mark McCormick, as in Hardcastle and... McCormick. Mm -hmm. Marrying his housekeeper because she is an immigrant who is in the country illegally. Again, as much as we appreciate all that our immigrants do for our country, you really don't want to try doing this at home. No, don't do this. Please don't do this. And, oh yeah, and there are two kids as well. One of them would go on to have a very good career. The other, Who knows? So <laughs> not so. Well, he'd probably have a really good career too, just not as an actor. So yeah, the log line, as dictated by creator Michael J. Leeson, who also created a show on NBC starring Mr. Black. That premiered in 1984. Los Angeles architect and single father Peter Farrell, played by Daniel Hugh Kelly from Hardcastle and McCormick, was dependent upon his housekeeper Dora Calderon, played by the lovely and talented Elizabeth Pena, who you remember from the first Rush Hour movie. And Batteries Not Included. Don't forget Batteries Not Included. I cannot forget Batteries Not Included. However, she was an undocumented immigrant from El Salvador, and the United States government's INS was about to deport her. To prevent her from being arrested upon her return home, and to be able to continue to employ her services as a housekeeper, the two married. As marriages under false pretenses were, and still are, violations of federal law, the first episode included a disclaimer notifying viewers of this fact and adding, you should not try this in your own home. Two important aspects of the stories were the threat of their sham marriage being discovered by authorities and the possibility that they might fall in love, normalizing and legitimizing their marriage. And of course, hilarity ensues. So we talked about our sort of family unit. We talked about Daniel Hugh Kelly, who you would remember as Mark McCormick on Hardcastle and McCormick. Of course, he was not Brian Keith, and he was not the car. That's because all anyone remembers from Hardcastle and McCormick. Which is why I had to preface that by saying he was not Judge Hardcastle, and he was not the car. And would you believe he's still working today? Wow. Yeah, he's popping up all over the place. Uh, his last known TV credit was Major Crimes, but he is in the film Skipping Stones, Far More, and she Venge. I don't know what any of those movies are, but hey, he's keeping busy, and that's to be applauded. Oh, he was also in Star Trek Insurrection. Oh, Star Trek Insurrection. Hey, do you know the bad guy in that movie was F. Murray Abraham? I do know that the bad guy in that movie was F. Murray Abraham. Probably like his fourth best role between that, Amadeus, him playing Conchu in Moon Knight, and his performance in the stage production of Ball, Get Out of My Nachos. Ball, get out of my nachos! That's later on this year. That's October. Yep. Ball, get out of my nachos. You might be wondering, Greg, what the hell is ball, get out of my nachos? Google it. Google it. We ain't here to educate you. 
Okay, and of course, we talked about the guy who married Dora. Now let's talk about Dora. She was played by Elizabeth Pena, who you would remember in Nothing Like the Holidays, Battery Not Included, La Bamba, Rush Hour, The Incredibles. She was in The Incredibles? What? I didn't even realize she was in The Incredibles. I didn't realize she was in The Incredibles either. Who did she play in The Incredibles? She voiced Mirage. Mirage. In... Yes. She was also a founding member of the Hispanic Organization of Latin Actors, or Hola. Okay. And, and Royce Rosa Santos and Maya and Miguel, sadly, no longer with us. Yeah. But we miss her. We do. Playing the role of the elder daughter, Kate, is Juliette Lewis. And if you don't know who Juliet Lewis is, yeah, seriously, just what, po- no. what, what podcast are you listening to? All we have to say is Audrey Griswold number three. For my money, the best of the Audrey Griswolds. And hey, she acted alongside Johnny Galecki. For my money, the second best of the Rusty Griswolds. We covered the best Rusty Griswold. Last time with SNL eighty five eighty six, argue with me. Although let's be honest, he wasn't as great as Ethan Embry in Vegas Vacation, where he pretended to be like Mister Papa Giorgio. Remember that? I do remember that. That was a great scene. You're saying that Johnny Galecki is an inferior uh, Rusty Griswold. I'm, I'm not he saying he's an inferior Rusty Quizzle. I'm just saying he didn't have a great scene like Ethan Embry in Vegas Vacation with Mr. Papa yes, Georgia. He no, no. He had a great scene when he was at the uh, department store. Oh, and he, uh, caught oh okay. Clark, that was a good uh, scene, with the too. Model showing off the... Yes, yes, that was a good nice. scene. That was, but that was, that that was great. That was scene. But it wasn't Mr. Papa Giorgio. <laughs> oh, Man, yeah. Oh, I disagree, but... We could debate that at another. Yeah. Oh, time. by the way, I know there's somebody's somebody's gonna drop a line in our Twitter and mention, "Hello, you forgot Ed Helms." Trust me, we did not forget Ed Helms or Blake Lively's brother in European Vacation. No, we did our research. We did the math. It goes: Anthony Michael Hall, Johnny Galecki, Ethan Embry. Fight me. Agreeable. All right. And playing the uh, role of Will Ferrell. No, not that Will Ferrell. Not not that one. Is Jason Horst, whose last known credit was in 1997's Plan B as High School Boy. High School Boy. Yes. Aside from I Married Dora, he did three episodes of Growing Pains, four episodes of Just the Ten of Us, and one episode of Night Court. And also a couple episodes of Small Wonder, where he played um, the younger son of Ted Lawson's boss at United Robotronics. If that makes any sense. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. And there are more people on this cast. We have playing the role of Dolph Menninger, who is supposed a uh, co worker of Mr. Farrell, Sanford Jensen, whose last known television credit was in 1992 on Rachel Gunn RN. I don't know what that is either. All I know is was a nurse is involved and it was on Fox. That's all I know. And also playing the role of, and this is his boss, Hughes Whitney Lennox, Henry Jones. Sadly, no longer with us, died in 1999. I'm wondering if there's anything I would remember him for. He played a night clerk uh, in the 1990 movie Dick Tracy. He played B. Riley Wicker on 
Falcon Crest in 1985. And he played Homer McCoy in future entry Gunshy. Gunshy. Yeah. Also, he played James Melanson in the Green Girl episode of Super Train. Because if there is somebody who is on an episode of Super Train, by golly, we're going to mention Super Train. He was also in the pilot of the TV version of Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice. He was also on an episode of the New Love American Style. I don't know why I can't get enough of that, but yeah, he was on the New Love American Style. Oh, God. Yep. But yeah, he did a lot of early live television in his in his career, and he, he just knew how to roll with the punches. I mean, this is a legendary guy right here. So that's your main cast. Now let's talk about all the episodes. And I had to use the uh, Google, the Google episode guide, because not much is known about this series, except, but I'm, wait a minute, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Yeah, don't ruin it, Chico. Just move on. We'll, when we get to it, we'll get to it. Okay, here we go. Episode one, I married Dora. Peter marries his housekeeper to prevent her from being deported. Playing the role of the Justice of the Peace is a guy by the name of John Ingle. And I have to imagine that, oh God, he, okay. So he was in Heathers. He played Principal Gowan in Heathers. And he also played the Surgeon General in Robocop 2. But mostly, oh, and he played, mostly he's known for playing a uh, clergyman. He played Father Seymour on the Drew Carey show. And also it appears he's been the narrator in most of the Land Before Time movies. I'm not even kidding. And he was a judge of a show we're doing later this summer, Women in Prison. Now you're in jail. I knew Greg <laughs> yeah, I knew Greg was going to chime in there. But yeah, sadly, he is no longer with us. Episode two. My parents are coming. My parents are coming. Dora's parents visit their newly married daughter and son-in-law. I'm playing the role of both Parents, are you ready for this? Play the role of the father, someone we already talked about on this podcast, James Victor. You remember him from previous entry, Condo. Oh my god. Oh, I, I thought the, you were going to go Yeah, he played the father of Luis Savalos' character, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, he did. So he was the guy that uh, took down the uh, the door frame so the two condos could be merged into one so he could see his grandchild all the time? Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. He was also an AKA Pablo, also another episode we've covered. And playing the role of Dora's mother, Lupe Ontiveros, who you would remember as Juanita Mama Solis, uh, the uh, mother of Gabrielle Solis, who you remember as Ava Longoria's character on Desperate Housewives. She also played Abuelita on Future Entry. Rob? No, no, no. The correct title is Upside Down! Exclamation Point Rob! Exclamation Point. And played Magdalena on Future Entry Greetings from Tucson. And Luisa on four episodes of Veronica's Closet. And she was also on AKA Pablo. But I wish I, I wish I was making that up. Mm-mm. But uh, you would probably remember her from career defining roles in 1997's As Good As It Gets, 2002's Real Women Have Curves, and 1997's Selena. She played Yolanda Saldivar. Oh, 
No. We don't. We don't talk about. Yeah, we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all know. If you don't know why, seriously. And another person in this episode that rounding out uh, Dora's family is Marisol, played by Evelyn Guerrero, who played a young female ensign of no name in a 1987 episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. And she also is known for her role as Donna in the Cheech and Chong movies. But mostly the Star Trek The Next Generation thing. Anytime we're going to mention Star Trek The Next Generation, we're going to take it. Episode 3, where there's a will, there's no way. Peter decides it's time to write a new will after Mr. Lennox convinces him and decides to name his sister-in-law as guardian of the children. It's not a popular decision and raises questions as to the state of his marriage to Dora. Played a known role in this episode. Played the role of Janine Desmond. Allie Mills. Allie Mills. Norma Arnold from... um, the Wonder Years, the original Wonder Years. Oh, okay, so Kevin's mother. Yep, Kevin's mother. Kevin's mother, okay. Yep, she plays uh, Peter's sister. Kevin's mother, Peter's sister. Episode four, Our Little Girls Growing Up. Peter ignores Dora's warnings and gives Kate permission to take an overnight trip with her high school band. Yeah, that's pretty much it. We have a sort of a name here. Playing Lori in this episode is Mandy Ingber. Uh huh. She's best known now for being Jennifer Aniston's yoga instructor. Not even kidding about that. But we're going to talk about her sooner or later because she played the daughter of McLean Stevenson's character on Dirty Dancing, the TV series. She was baby in the Dirty Dancing television series. Uh, another uh, daughter. Oh, she the other. Baby. She's another. Oh, she's she the other daughter. Baby. So she's not baby. She's not baby. No. No. Oh, that stinks. But still, we got a McLean Stevenson mention out of it. So oh, we, 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 we met our we met our quota. Wait, we have two. We mentioned Condo. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay, so we met our quota for the month. Okay, we're done talking about McLean Stevenson. Yeah, and also, if you go back and watch the cult classic Teen Witch, she can flow. She can bust a ride. Is this the top that scene? Yeah. Okay, yeah, the top that scene in Teen Witch. That's all anyone remembers from that movie. Supersonic, idiotic, disconnected, not respected. Who would ever really want to go and top that? Top that! Thank you. That was the rap song Top That from the movie Teen Witch. Once again, I apologize that our regular warm-up comic OD'd at a gay man's apartment this morning. Oh, wait, we mentioned Blake Lively's brother earlier. That movie stars Blake Lively's sister. Robin Lively? Yes. Oh, you know what Robin Lively was in? Not Quite Human 2? Well, that too, but not that. She was in the second season of Twin Peaks. And she was in the Twin Peaks parody episode on Psych. <laughs> she played the quote unquote stand in for the mother of Laura Palmer in that episode. Oh boy. Can't wait for that. Okay. Uh, episode five God's Waiting Room. A retired Mr. Lennox does not know what to do with himself. Okay. We have a legendary voice actress in this episode. Probably an actress who is once a known commodity, but has parlayed that into voice acting. Patty Edwards. She was the uncredited voice of Gozer on Ghostbusters. The original Ghostbusters. Yeah, the original Ghostbusters. She was in six episodes of The Trouble with Harry. In 1960. And she was in Fatal Vision, the uh, miniseries from 1984. 
But yeah, she was also Anya in The Dauphin on Star Trek The Next Generation. And who was Hank Shannon on Night Court, Mike? Bull's mom. Bull's yep. mom. She played Bull's mom. Y- yeah. Yeah, Bull's mom was, I think, like on a uh, uh, on the open seas. She was like a sailor type. Uh, like almost, I'm going to use this very nicely, like a sea hag. But yeah, she returned to see Bull in, in one of the later seasons, like season seven or season six. But yeah, she, she played Bull's mom, yes. But since then, she was on... Uh... She played Blossom and Jetsam in Disney's Little Mermaid, uh, the TV series, of course. She played a maid on Legends of Prince Valiant, Gorda on Phantom 2040, Lucy on 101 Dalmatians, the series, Atropos on Hercules, and Vera Gruber Schwartz on Pepper Ann. Sadly, she is no longer with us. Oh, yeah. Did we mention she was also in Halloween 3, Season of the Witch? Oh, I love Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Happy, happy Halloween. Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. Halloween, Halloween, Halloween happy, happy Halloween. Silver <laughs> Shamrock. One of my co-workers that I once worked with hates Halloween 3 with a passion. And so How every... I know. So every year I tease him to spread the greatness of Halloween 3. And he's like, Greg, really? Yeah. Not much is known about this episode because on October 16th, 1987, when this episode actually aired, ABC broke in midway with live coverage of the rescue of baby Jessica. Oh yeah, that was fall of 87, yeah. Mm-hmm. October 16th, 1987. Uh, I got a quote here. She had captured the hearts and attention of the entire nation after having fallen into and becoming trapped in a deep hole in her hometown of Midland, Texas. The balance of the episode was never seen by the home audience. So yeah, all we know is Patty Edwards was in it and Mr. Lennox has retired. Because ABC broke in with Baby Jessica. Episode 6. Happy, happy birthday, Dora. An immigration official is suspicious of Peter and Dora's marriage. Uh Uh-oh. 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 And playing the role of Graves, the agent, Patrick Cronin, who would be best known as Dr. Rimlin in Rocky V, and also Phil Weldon on an episode of Future Entry, Ferris Bueller. One more name, by no means a big name, but interesting uh, while doing research, playing Peter's doppelganger, an uncredited role in this episode, is Tom Lancaster, who's a stuntman, hasn't been in much of anything, but, but, and this is a big but, he has been a contestant on the Joker's Wild in 1978, The Dating Game in 1980, Scrabble in 1985, and To Tell the Truth in 1990. Wow. Wow, indeed. Episode 7, A Matter of Molding. When Peter brings home a date, Dora keeps interrupting. The said date Nina is played by a very known entity, Marcia Strasman, a- aka Rick Moranis's wife on the Honey I Shrunk the Kids movies, and Mrs. Cotter. Mrs. Cotter, yes. Julie Cotter. She also played uh, a doctor on the two part pilot of Future Entry E backslash R. The comedy. Yes. The first one of George Clooney. And Jason Alexander was in it, but slightly before And he, Elliot Gould, yeah. And Elliot Gould, but slightly before Jason Alexander was pimping the um, McDLT. Right. Because that was like 85 the next year, because we've talked about that. Right. Go listen to that. Yeah. That's a good episode. Especially when I had to stop the ending because I found something. 
Yeah, and Viv did a McDLT commercial. It was a good commercial. You should watch it. Was. It was. Yeah. Episode 8. Club Montez. Peter is appalled when Dora takes the children to a Latino nightclub. One of the writers on this episode would go on to be a writer and a showrunner for The Simpsons, Chase Richdale. But a known entity on this show, again, Marisol is back uh, in the guise of Evelyn Guerrero, but a known entity playing Ramon, Bert Rosario, who would be known as Zach Rambo's major domo in future entry Sword of Justice. And also as Juan on a few episodes of Remington Steel. Oh yeah, and he was also an AKA Pablo. He played Manuel Rivera. Okay. Episode 9. Dora steps out. Peter's boss begins a romance with Dora. And in this episode, oh gosh, really big name, Allison Sweeney, who you would know as A, Sammy Brady on Days of Our Lives, B, one of the uh, hosts of The Biggest Loser, C, insert game show from 1996 to 2010, inclusive. Or D, on the Hallmark Channel. Oh, yeah, that's right. She's on the Hallmark Channel now. What, what is it? The uh, Bakery Mysteries or The something? Bakery Mysteries, yes. Murder She Baked. Murder She Baked. I showed a picture once, Chico, of one of those DVDs, and I just was like, oh, my God. Murder She Baked. This is the most hilarious thing ever. It is most one of the most hilarious things ever. But you know something? I would really love to meet Ali Sweeney one of these days. Well, who wouldn't want to meet Allie Sweeney? She seems like a nice lady. Hey, guys, do you want an E? You guys did A, B, C, D. Do you want an E? What's the E? What's the e? Oh, sit down. You, obviously, you haven't seen this in the last few days when it got publicly released. What is it? She was the host of GSN's Pointless Pilot in 2017. Oh, my God. Somebody has a record of the Pointless Pilot. Yes, the full pilot, uh, the, the buzzer blog people got permission to uh, share it this past week, and she hosts the uh, the pilot. Okay. Okay, that's going on pilot month for next year. And, and she played the Alexander Armstrong role. She was the host, not the she sidekick. The, yes. Kind of gathered that. Episode 10, West Coast Story. Peter and Dora help his sister-in-law stage a benefit. Ali Mills is back on this one, as is Richard Fancy, who plays a character named Zane, and he has been in the 2007 reboot of Halloween and 2008's The Onion movie, where he played Kenneth Garber. The mm-hmm. Onion movie? Seriously? I thought it was one of the funniest movies. It, it was released... I don't even think it made it to theaters. I think it was no, a straight it did It was, it was, a straight... It was straight, straight to video, man. Straight to video. Well, also, the place I originally saw it was on G4. This is like 15 years ago or so. I thought it was so good. And coincidentally, since you talked about Blockbuster earlier, Greg, I found it at a Blockbuster closing like in 2009. That is such a funny, funny movie. He also... to me. Okay. He also played Littman on 10 episodes of Seinfeld. If I'm not mistaken, I believe Littman was um, Elaine's original boss before Peterman. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? He came back for the finale, so yeah. Yeah, but also, oh, hold on a second. Mr. Littman was also in an earlier episode that season because... Remember when Elaine tells him about the idea about the muffin tops? Yes. Yes, and I then, do. And then he opens a store called Top of the Muffin to you. I do remember and that. And then episode. Elaine wants in. And then they're like, what are we going to do at the bottom of the muffins? Oh, we'll just give them to a homeless shelter. And so the homeless shelter gets the bottom of the muffins. And they come into the muffin top store. 
and are like pissed because all the homeless people are asking where the top of the muffin is. <laughs> Oh, let's just let's let's move on, shall we? Uh, episode eleven: the thirty-five year itch. Dora's mother accuses her father of having an affair. Of course, James Victor and Lupe Ontiveros are back in this episode. But you know who else is in this episode? Playing the role of Ornette from previous entry, Second Chance slash Boys Will Be Boys, Damian Slade. <laughs> Oh no! Oh yeah! <laughs> I knew that name rang a bell. <laughs> While you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit our notification. <laughs> oh, Eugene! <laughs> Refer back to episode fifty-eight. Wait, this would be during Second Chance Boys Will Be Boys. Yep. 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 I love his hustle. I appreciate the hustle of Damien Slade in 1987. He wanted to find his $2 from John Cusack and Better Off Dead. Oh, hold on. We you have know who video, directed... don't we? No, we don't. Okay. <laughs> no, but you know who directed Better Off Dead? Who directed Better Off Dead? Savage Steve Holland. Nice! That's right. Eek the cat, whammy. Wait, am I saying my name? Hey, Hey! whammy, what are you doing here? I I knew you were going to come in once I mentioned Savage Steve Holland. Yeah, well, it's sort of like Flash and the Bat Signal. I hear Savage Steve Holland or whammy. I got to show up. Hey, whammy. Have you ever seen yeah. the movie One Crazy Summer that Savage Steve Holland did? I've had three crazy summers in the last three years. <laughs> oh. oh, but you know who's in that movie, Whammy? No. Tom Ballard. America's pre-Captain America ass. America's ass in the 80s? Sweet! <laughs> I thought he was going to say, oh, neat! Oh, neat! Oh, neat! Oh, neat! <laughs> okay. Well, well, Whammy, you're about to have a fourth amazing summer. Can't wait to see you, bruh. Can't wait to see you guys watch it. Bye-bye. Okay, episode 12. Guess who's coming to dinner forever? It's the Saved by the Bell, the college years penultimate episode, basically. News of Peter's marriage gives his mother a heart attack. <laughs> Said mother is played by Peggy McKay, who is sadly no longer with us. But uh, and we talked about Sammy Brady earlier. She played Caroline Brady, the matriarch of that family. She was also in future entry Hardball, not the Mike Klaus show, but Hardball, and nine episodes of Lou Grant as Marion Hume. Perhaps her most lasting role was 211 episodes as Susan Garrett in The Young Marrieds back in 1964. So yeah, a known entity who is sadly no longer with us. (sighs) all been leading up to this, friends. Episode 13. The Millionaire's Club. Peter must decide whether to accept a lucrative two-year job in the Middle East. In this episode, we have the return of Peggy McKay as Lucille Farrell, but also somebody we talked about fairly uh, frequently on this show, play the role of Tom Gerlinger, James Widows. We're, we're just laughing, Jamie Widows. What do we really need to say? Right? But you know what? Even with Jamie Widows there, that isn't even the best part of this episode. Not even close. Oh, look, Greg's got it loaded up. Okay, I, you know what? This could be a real moment. We don't have we we don't we don't even have to describe it. 
let this describe itself. This is the final scene. The final scene. Of the the last thing scene. you'll ever see of the series. Yeah. So he's going to go on the flight. I think he's about to, he's already left on the flight, right? Is He's already left on the flight. He is left on the flight and, well, take a listen. Hold on, hold on. Calm down here. Mr. Peter. It's been canceled. The flight? No, our series. Oh, adios. Perhaps the best 23 seconds in all of television. That's one hell of a way to break the fourth wall. (laughs) Uh, I have to imagine, by the time they shot that scene, they knew that this show is doomed. Oh, they had to know. They had to know. That, That couldn't have been reshot. Nope. It's like they couldn't have reshot that, or they couldn't have gotten everybody back. They couldn't have redone the sets. They had to have known. They honestly had to have known that this show was not long for television. No. But seriously, it's one of the most absurd and funniest things you'll ever see on a 13 week show. Yep. And it's out on the YouTube, so go look for it. Yeah, it, it is out on the YouTube of various uh, quality and or legality. Let's just say it's about as legal as marriages of convenience. But uh, yeah, it speaks at least to me that ABC did not allow critics to screen the premiere of I Married Zora prior to a special sneak preview, according to uh, TVObscurities.com, who published those 23 seconds. I imagine that if they did, they would have savaged this show. Like, absolutely savaged it. But uh, opposite the second half of Beauty and the Beast on CBS and the second half of Rex to Riches on NBC, following Growing Pains, it did rank pretty highly out of 68 shows that week. It earned a 20.3 rating and a 33 share, ranking 13th. So yeah, it did pretty well for itself. Then you move it to Friday to join the TGIF lineup. It did hold all of Full House's audience, but... Then there's the whole Dallas of the thing. Because that night, Dallas was a two-hour episode. A two-hour season premiere. And it was heavily sampled. Like, heavily. I Married Dora ended up placing third. It did rate well out of Full House, but, yeah. And that next week, where it was up against uh, regular competition, Beauty and the Beast and Rags to Riches, it pretty much held its own against Rags to Riches, but it was beaten by Beauty and the Beast. And it only held most of Full House's audience. And from there... Well, actually, it went up in week three, and so did Full House. It was up against the NLCS on NBC, which helped. Yeah, that was the um, San Francisco Giants, St. Louis Cardinals, NLCS, which is mostly remembered, Mike, for, um, what is it, the one flap down? Who was the guy, who was the guy on the Giants who had the hand one flap down? Oh, Jeffrey Leonard. That's the guy. He had, like, five home runs in that NLCS. It was, like, insane. And his whole gimmick in that series was he'd just have, like, the one hand to his side down as he rounded the bases. And he's hit one to deep left center. And look out now. If it's gone, it is gone. And he's got one flap down. Yeah, it looks like-
Look at his left arm. There it is. The flap is down. And when he gets to third, it's going to take him maybe two, three minutes to come around. And remember, he now joins the company of Henry Aaron, Gary Matthews, and Bill Madelon. Now he's slowing down. Now, you see, I wouldn't have paid attention to the NLCS back then. The ALCS that year, uh, you have the Twins. And, oh, my gosh, the Twins were really, really good that year. And the Tigers. Frank Viola and Curry oh, yeah. Fuckett, obviously, and they, Ken Frank, Herbeck and Frank Viola, St. John's alum. And I believe yeah. now he's the, um, he's the pitching coach for the High Point Rockers in the Atlantic League. Yeah, I think you've mentioned that. Yeah. Because I know well, not he, on this episode, but yeah, I've mentioned in the past. Yeah, he was in the uh, Mets minor league system for a while. Um, you know, helped um, Degrom and Syndergaard and all those guys as they were coming up. Yep, but the show never got out of the tens, uh, elevens ranges, and it certainly didn't get the uh, numbers it got on Tuesday. But it did fit in the ABC family lineup. So what happened? It went up against Beauty and the Beast on CBS. Now, wait a second. I'm going to defend Beauty and the Beast for a moment. If you, now I know both of you were very young at that point. Beauty and the Beast was highly touted by CBS. That's what I'm this saying. Like, yeah. 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 Well, uh, the thing is, it didn't last that long. It only lasted, I think, two seasons. But Ron Perlman and Linda uh, Hamilton. And Ron Perlman. Yeah, there's Ron your beauty, Perl- there's your beast. Ron Perlman and Linda Hamilton. Come on. That's it. That's it. And that's the list. Well, that makes sense. But still, I guess you can only take the joke so far before, well, that happens. So, I guess you could say I married Dora came to its natural conclusion, but at the same time, you imagine that there could have been so much more that you could have done with it. But then again, we'll never know, won't we? Because I married Dora between Full House and Mr. Belvedere. The Full House became Legendary Family Fair. Mr. Belvedere was just incredible television. I married Dora, though. It was a thing on TV. Let's annul this marriage. Let's annul this marriage. And now pronounce you perfect strangers. You can pick up your new husband and your new wife at that closet over there. In the meantime, uh, you can catch... All of our episodes, and it was a thing on TV.com. All of our episodes, our mini shows, our live watches, our very special event episodes, and of course, links to all of our socials. And it was a thing on TV, and it was a thing on TV podcast on the Book of Faces because the Millionaires Club. Wait, but in- Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair conspired to get our Facebook page removed for a period? No, this is the last episode where a college friend offered Peter the chance of a lifetime, two years, helping decide to plan a new infrastructure in the city of the Middle East for two years. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell which order we recorded these episodes in based on that reaction. <laughs> but hey, you can check out what we have in store for you next week. Uh, next week, we go back to the vault of Saturday morning to find an early science fiction classic? I guess. I, I don't guess. know. I, I don't... Possibly? <laughs> and also, Diana Canova, good. Danny Thomas, good. The two of them together? Hey, the good stuff is... Co- the, the really good stuff is coming a week from next Monday. Trust us on this. You have to eat the really esoteric show broccoli in order to get the John Shuck dessert. Just saying. But all of this will make sense next time, right here on It Was a Thing on TV. For Greg, for Mike, I'm Chico. Thanks for listening. Please be kind to each other, and we will see you for the next one. 
Wow! Too bad that's going to be edited off of the YouTube version, but still. Yeah, I was just going to say, you're going to keep that, keep that as the ending in spite of the, the Sinatra? It'll only be on the friggin' right. Podbean feed, so yep, who cares? Yeah, it's fine. This is fine. Everything's fine. Yeah, guys, okay. just YouTube search Mr. Papa Giorgio on YouTube, and you'll figure out the ending. Note, literally about one minute after we stopped recording, this happened. He struck him out! Five Met pitchers combined for the second no-hitter in New York Mets history. Edwin Diaz puts on the finishing touches, striking out the side of the ninth inning, and the Mets celebrate their second ever no-hitter, started by Tom Orr McGill, finished by Edwin Diaz, as the Mets no-hit the Phillies.